Okay, hello, can people hear me? Cool, okay, well, um, so we've still got a couple minutes before the actual start time, so I will, um, I won't do too much until then, uh, but as you can see, this is the moon. Um, I'm just testing to see how much delay there is, because for streaming this I have to balance um, video delay with uh, video quality. Looks like it's about 10 seconds, um, so I'm just going to need to not let myself get disoriented as to where the video actually is. Just line up a last couple few things. Okay, so um, there I was just finishing setting up my, um, my finding device, which here is a laser pointer, uh, which makes it easier for me to use it without uh, getting up and like looking through an eyepiece or something. I can just turn on the laser, point it at what I want to look at, and then uh, that's it. So um, to begin with here, we're looking at the moon, obviously. Uh, this is more or less the right way up uh, if you were looking at it from somewhere in Ottawa. Uh, so the, the south pole of the moon is here at the bottom, a little bit to the left because it's past halfway through the sky right now. Um, and then the north ends up here. Uh, so if you look at this yourself, you, um, I guess, depending on your own vision, you'll probably be able to see the darker patches as being different from the lighter patches. Uh, but beyond that, it's kind of difficult to see the rest. Um, so the big dark patches are craters. They're very big, very old craters from early in the solar system's history when there were a lot more impactors than there are today. Uh, because early on they all hit something, or most of them. Uh, so those made these very wide craters that then filled with magma because the moon was still hot back then, um, whereas now it's cooled off quite a bit. Uh, it cools off faster than Earth because it's smaller. Uh, so now, because they filled with darker lava rock, they appear uh, a much darker and smoother shade. So everything else uh, on the moon is brighter than those, and you can see some areas are very bright, and those are recent uh, recent impacts. So for example, I guess you can't see my pointer in real time, but towards the right, um, towards the right side of the moon there is 
a very bright spot that's saturated in the video, uh, like it's completely white, and that's just a recent crater where there's very rough, unweathered rock. Uh, so question in the chat, we always see approximately the same face of the moon. Um, there's an effect called tidal locking where, um, so basically the tides are the, the gravity from the moon and the earth stretches each uh, along the direction between the two. And that's why we have tides, but it, um, we have tides because the water gets stretched the most because it's a liquid and it's easy to move. Um, and those tidal bulges, they also affect the rock to some extent. And it, it would be hard for me to show here. Uh, you can Google tidal locking and there are some diagrams that make it pretty simple. Um, but basically the gravitational effect on those tidal bulges that the gravitational effect creates um, spins the body so that any two orbiting bodies will gradually come to always face each other. Uh, so the moon initially spun faster than it does now, but now it spins at exactly the right speed so that one side is always facing the Earth. Um, it's not exactly the same side that we always see because the moon's orbit isn't a perfect circle. Um, there are videos on the internet of this. You can see it kind of like wobbling slightly by maybe 10 degrees, but it's, it's always the same features. There, there isn't any significant thing that you can see on the moon sometimes, but not other times, um, as long as the sun is shining on it. And other question, recent for these recent craters is um, scale of tens or hundreds of millions of years. Uh, so the, the dark craters and all the lava on the moon, that is very old from the beginnings of the solar system um, four to four and a half billion years ago. Um, and another interesting thing you can see from those is that some of the, um, some of the impacts were strong enough to create mountains uh, you can kind of see them here, I'll zoom in later, but uh, especially this crater, the crater in the top left, um, you can see things that look like mountains around it, and they're not the same as Earth mountains. They're not, they're not volcanoes, and they're not produced by tectonic drift plus erosion, um, but they look like mountains. The Apollo astronauts from Apollo 15, I believe, landed... Um, what will be right in the center of the view in a few seconds. And I'll zoom in on that later. Uh, but right in the middle of the big mountains, and they look like mountains, but they're not the same as Earth mountains. Um, there are also mountains at the center of craters, which you can see a little bit in this crater Copernicus on the left. Um, and I'll zoom in on that later as well. Uh, but the mountains in the middle of craters are caused by essentially the splash before everything solidifies the center rebounds and creates large mountains okay well um yeah so this is zoomed out i i just have the camera in the telescope and i'm also um combining each two by two square of pixels into a single pixel um so we're we're quite zoomed out and that's just to give an overview, but um, now I will zoom in. First, I'll just try um, making the pixels one-to-one. -one. And we could go further in, potentially, uh, by using an additional lens to magnify. So yeah, the video is just catching up to me, turning up the brightness. Um, but this is now zoomed in on the south part of the moon. Um, and for whatever reason, the south part of the moon has this giant field of craters. Um, there, aren't, there isn't as much of a concentration of craters on other parts of the moon. And um, many of these craters are old. Uh, just the, the basic reasoning of it is, um, so here I've, I've moved the field of view a little bit and the video will catch up in a few seconds. 
but the dark areas of the moon, that's how many craters there were, or that's how many craters have come along since the lava flooded that four billion years ago. Um, so the difference between the number of craters in the dark part and the number of craters in the brighter part is the number of impacts in those first few hundred million years. Uh, so most of those craters are old. They just never erode because the moon has no erosive effects other than um, radiation from space, which is much slower than, um, than the wind and the rain that we have on Earth. Uh, so here, I think this is sharp enough that I can zoom in further with my magnifying lens. Um, if anyone knows photography, this is essentially a focal extender. If anyone knows astronomy a little bit, it's a Barlow lens. Uh, one probably comes with every beginner telescope. It's just a little tiny lens in a barrel that makes things, um, it goes between the telescope and the camera and it makes everything look bigger. Okay, everything's out of focus now um, because the lens does not respect the focus. Um, so I'll just have to bring it back in. Oh, there we go. And it's very dim, so I'll turn up the exposure. Okay, this may have been a bit too much magnification, um, but I'll try it out. Uh, as you can see, everything's wobbly and sporadically blurry, and that's just because of the effect of the air. Um, the, the air above us, just like the air above hot pavement, um, is turbulent and uh, because it's between something that's hot and something that's cold. Uh, for example, the sun has been warming the city all day, uh, so the hot air is all moving up and um, creating this wobble. It's, you don't see it normally, but here I'm zoomed in quite a lot, so it's visible. And that is an annoying thing about trying to zoom in with telescopes, and that's the reason I'm using this camera or that's the reason I have this camera. Um, the camera takes a great many pictures of something that I want a good picture of, um, and then you kind of average out uh, the displacements that you use software to track contrasty features like a crater, and then deform every image back to the average, um, which is ideally what it looked like to begin with or what it actually looks like up there and then combine them together. But anyway, here you can see a bunch of craters. Um, you can see this big crater on the left, which I'll center, which has a number of smaller craters in it. Um, and then you can also see if I go up a little, uh, so this is what this in the center here is called Tycho after a prominent early astronomer. Um, this bright crater, and Tycho is one of the more prominent craters on the moon. It's quite recent, and as a result, you can't. It's not just the crater that's still there and visible. Um, there's a large amount of debris that was ejected from the force of the impact. Uh, that's strewn all the way over the moon. Um, you can see you can see trails of debris that was thrown up that extend for 
thousands of kilometers. And I'll zoom out again afterwards and point those out here. We're in a bit too close to really see them. But uh, so yeah, the, the craters of the moon are super diverse. They, the impactors come in at all angles and then you get more craters in the craters and so on. Uh, my telescope isn't quite big enough to pull out all the detail on the craters and also um, the air in the city isn't super clear, uh, especially in the summer. But you can still see a fair amount here. So here I'm going to just zoom out the quick pixel-based way. Um, that's too bright. So now, now we're zoomed back out. Um, and you can kind of see what I was saying about the debris from Tico Crater. Um, I'll, I'll pan around here where it's more visible. So yeah, there, as, as the camera catches up, um, you can see streaks, especially extending. Um, there's one that goes a bit up of right and one that goes a bit left of up. Uh, coming out from that crater to the edges of the image here. And they also go much further than that. Um, as I'll, I'll zoom back out at the end. Um, which will be soon because the moon's about to go behind a house. So, um, other interesting things on the moon. Uh, one thing to note is the moon is interesting because of its shadows. Uh, over here, the sun's shining pretty much straight down on the surface, so there aren't any shadows, and there isn't nearly as much interesting detail to see. So um, the full moon is generally boring, and the reason that I will usually try to have these streams or in-person events whenever those come back uh, I'll usually try to have those when the shadows are facing us. So when, when the line between night and day on the moon is uh, pretty much in the middle. Right now we're just a few days past that, so we still get a lot of nice detail. But during the full moon, everything looks like this. You can see the dark rock and the bright rock, but you can't see any um, topography. Uh, so while we're over here, one thing to point out is um, as that camera catches up, it will center uh, right there. So the, the center, oh, now it's drifting off to the side, I think. Um, right in the center here is where the first moon landing was. Um, so you can see there's the the, the dark areas on the right side of the screen from more recent magma um, and protruding into those from the left there's a little um, a little peninsula of brighter area um, can you see my mouse I can't tell if it's showing up in the video I did set it to but I don't see it Okay, well, um, I can mark on the screen then. Uh, using a feature not designed for that. Um, that box should be visible, and it's about to move. Um, Okay, everyone's, uh, let me know if anyone can't see the red box, but you should be able to see the red box. And um, yeah, so Apollo 11 touched down right in the middle of that box. Uh, the moon landings generally liked to land in these dark areas, the Maria, because um, as you can see, the relatively recent lava covered most of the craters. Um, 
so the ground was much smoother there and much easier for a spacecraft to land on. Um, I can actually, I can go through a couple of the other landing sites. I do have a map open. Uh, so they had, they had previously also landed a, um, an unmanned probe, uh, NASA did two years earlier in essentially the same spot. Um, and let's see. Oh, I've never actually looked, but, um, oh, hang on. No, sorry, I misread. Um, well, I'll find Apollo 15. Apollo 15 is the one I mentioned earlier, and it landed in a spot that is cool regardless. So once the video catches up, Okay, so yeah, there, um, so, uh, question, if there's a particular reason the South Pole is untouched by these lava flows, I don't think there's a particular reason, the, um, the cratering is, uh, well, the, the lava flowed into the lowest areas, which were these enormous craters. And the distribution of the enormous craters was somewhat random, um, I think. One thing that was less random is that the far side of the moon has almost none of these large seas of lava. And the reason for that is, um, I forget exactly, but it's something to do with the Earth's gravity. Um, creating essentially different geology on the near side and on the far side. Um, but here, I'll just turn off the brightness a little bit. I don't want to turn the brightness up too far because bright means essentially a longer exposure on the camera. Um, and long exposure turns that atmos atmospheric distortion into a blur because you're taking a picture of multiple different instances of blur. Okay, so someone asked about the permanently shadowed craters. I'll, I'll go back to the South Pole in a moment and talk about that. Um, but now quickly, I think I'm just going to, um, I'll just go across the, um, the, the Terminator, the line between night and day, and then back to the South Pole. Um, and then we'll move on to Jupiter because both of these are about to go behind a building. Um, so, so here's some more craters. This is the northern edge of the mountains that were created by uh, the big impact that made this basin. And I'll just slowly go along to the south. Um, this crater that the video will catch up to in a minute is called Copernicus. It's one of the more interesting features on the moon. It faces pretty close to directly towards Earth um, so you can see a lot of, a lot of its topography. You can sort of see the two peaks in the center of it caused by the impact. And it's also got the, the mountains from the southern edge of that crater just north of it. And now we're back to where we started.
and a um, question was asked about permanently shadowed craters. Those are craters that are essentially um, close enough to the south pole of the moon that the walls of the crater cause the bottom of the crater to be in permanent shadow because um, the sun is always more or less on the horizon. And um, we can't see any of them in detail from here because uh, the moon orbits in close to the same plane as we orbit the sun. So those craters are, um, they're facing directly edge on to us too. Uh, but some of these craters that you can see around the South Pole, um, so at the bottom and a little bit to the left of this image, uh, I don't think the areas in shadow there are permanently in shadow, but maybe the, uh, the bases of those craters are. Anyway, so um, now that there's an impending house in the way, I will move up to Jupiter for a bit. Um, so the, there won't be anything visible until I find it, but I'll get there in a second. Um, and I just need to, hmm, there's a small amount of tree in the way. I might need to move that to the side. Um, so I'm going to get up. I'll, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I used one tree branch to move the other one out of the way. Um, so now I just need to get this pointed exactly in the right direction. Um, with the help of my laser pointer. I'm also going to remove the magnifying lens, um, probably temporarily, because uh, it's difficult to find things when you are zoomed far in. Here, I'm just going to turn the exposure way too far up uh, so I can see Jupiter even though it's way out of focus. Um, so you'll see there a yellow circle and that's just Jupiter way out of focus all of the colorful dots oh wait was I mixed up that's Saturn that's not Jupiter <laughs> it was um, it was the only one I could see 
because there's a tree in the way of Jupiter right now. Um, but now that I look, I see that the other one's much brighter, as Jupiter should be. So yeah, those colorful spots are um, bad pixels on my camera. Uh, the, you'll see the same in any um, DSLR camera or whatever. Uh, sometimes pixels are just always firing because of some defect. And I can zoom in here. Um, this isn't real zoom, this is just doubling each pixel but it can be helpful because um, just because of video compression and the difficulty of seeing every single pixel. Just gonna see if I can pull any more focus out of this. Okay, so that's actually pretty good tonight. Um, yeah, so someone's saying with binoculars, uh, you can indeed see the brightest moons of Jupiter, uh, and the rings of Saturn are there. They're not as much there as they are in the video, um, but they are discernible. So here you can actually see a couple features in the rings. Um, I guess... Uh, first you can see the shadows just barely so here um, here the rings are tilted a little bit towards us so Saturn's North Pole is a bit closer than like halfway across the planet from our point of view and the reason I know that is because on the upper left part where um, so there's four places where the rings appear to touch the planet here but on the upper left part there's a little gap between the rings and the planet and that's a shadow that's cast by the planet on the rings um, and the the placement of that because that's on the left it means the sun's on the right uh, so the sun's behind us on the right um, and the top part of the rings is behind Saturn the bottom part of the rings is in front of Saturn, and um, you can maybe, maybe not make out the shadow that it casts on the planet. Another thing that can just barely be seen here is the Cassini division. Um, for somewhat complex reasons, um, it can be unstable to have two things orbiting in almost the same orbit. Um, so in Saturn's case, there are many tiny moons of the planet, which um, orbit either within the rings or orbit outside or inside the rings, but at the right place so that they orbit once for every twice the rings orbit or some other uh, simple fraction like that. And those cause certain regions of the rings to be unstable. So here what you can see ever so slightly is that uh, within the rings there, there is a gap. Um, you can see it just at the furthest left and right parts of the rings occasionally. Um, that there's a very small dark band in the rings where there is no ring. And that's called the Cassini division. It's much more visible in... Um, closer up pictures than mine, uh, either bigger telescopes or ones that um, we sent there on various probes. And it's shaking there just because I'm re-aiming my laser, just because Saturn is very small and it lets me point it more accurately than the moon did earlier. 
Okay, done. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that's all you can really see for Saturn. I'm also going to try turning the exposure down and also up to see if we can see anything else. Okay, so shorter exposure doesn't show much. Um, huh, longer exposure doesn't show much either. I was hoping to be able to find Saturn's moon Titan. Um, but it appears it's too dim for this camera to catch this. Oh, wait, no, is that it? Yeah, so it's ever so slightly visible there. Um, it's the thing that's moving that isn't Saturn. All of the spots that aren't moving are dead pixels. Um, the two spots that are moving, one close to the right of Saturn and one further to the left, those are two of Saturn's moons. Uh, they're easier to see with your eyes. Your eyes have better dynamic range than my camera, but this camera is not built to see very dim things. Okay, so um, the last target for the night is Jupiter, and I will just... Um, hmm... It should be fairly easy to get to that, but I will need to unplug the camera to let the telescope swing around. Uh, so I'll, I'll do that and I will be back in a minute.
Okay, so there we are, Jupiter. I didn't even need to um, didn't even need to look for it. I guess that laser is lined up pretty good right now. Um, I'll just center that a bit better. fix the exposure well I guess before I fix the exposure because it'll make them less apparent um, here is uh, if the video is caught up yeah okay so wait first there's a question about Pluto um, Pluto is very very dim uh, all, all of the minor planets are um, any of the planets can be found with pretty much any telescope if you know where to look and your eyes are slightly dark adapted, uh, like it's possible from the city. Uh, but, and even some of the bigger asteroids are pretty bright, but Pluto's very dim. Um, everything past Neptune is very dim. And for the purposes of right now, uh, streaming video with this camera, only uh, nothing out past Saturn is really uh, worthwhile. Uh, they're just, they're so far away. Even Saturn is far enough away that it requires a longer exposure than I would like. Uh, a bigger telescope would be helpful in that regard. Uh, but right now, only out to Saturn. So anyway, this is Jupiter, and the dots that you see beside it are its four Galilean moons, um, named because they are by far the brightest and were discovered by Galileo the first time he looked up at this with a telescope. So um, I'll just actually look up which is which because I forget tonight. Um, but the four together are Io with its volcanoes and Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, which are icy moons um, with oceans of water under the ice. So um, I have looked it up uh, from left to right. They are Callisto, Io, Ganymede, and Europa. Um, Callisto is actually the second biggest one, uh, furthest one to the left here, but it's very dim because it's made of uh, the, the particular kind of dirty ice that we know in Canada to be very dark in color. Um, the entire moon is essentially black ice so it is one of the darkest objects in the solar system. Uh, the next one in is Io with the volcanoes. Um, and then beside that is Ganymede, which is the largest, I think it's the largest moon in the solar system. Um, it and Titan are the largest two, uh, which like Callisto is ice over a watery ocean. Um, and then off on the right is Europa. And Europa is, one of the most interesting places in the solar system because it has ice over a watery ocean and probably um, the bottom of that ocean is geologically active rock. And geologically active rock means interesting chemistry in that water. Um, and it's thought that geologically active rock on the bottom of Earth's oceans is the is responsible for the origin of life on our planet. Um, it's thought that essentially large hydrothermal vents of the sort that um, you might have seen if you've seen the, the Blue Planet deep sea documentaries, um, those sorts of vents where you have a lot of interesting chemistry around heat coming up from the mantle into the ocean were 
responsible for the um, the beginnings of protein and nucleic acid chemistry that eventually evolved into a cell and free living life forms um, in the Earth's early ocean. Um, and Europa is thought to have this sort of uh, geothermal venting on the bottom of its ocean. Um, plumes recorded from both it and from Saturn's much smaller moon Enceladus uh, seem to show that kind of activity there. So exploration of that moon in the next um, decade is potentially going to be a very interesting field. Uh, so now I'm going to turn down the exposure, which will make the moons harder to see, but will make the surface easier. Uh, not too easy, but uh, once the video catches up, you'll definitely be able to see the main features in Jupiter's clouds. Um, so yeah, as you can now see, uh, Jupiter has different colors of clouds at different latitudes. It's a little darker around the north and south poles than most of it, but the main things you see here are the two, uh, the north and south equatorial cloud belts, which are those kind of red-brown lines across it. Um, the north one on top is thicker, the, the south one on the bottom is thinner, and it does contain the great red spot, but the great red spot is not facing the earth tonight, uh, so we can't see it here. Um, and I'm just gonna, yeah, recenter that. Okay, so um, that's about it for tonight. There isn't, um, those are the objects we can see. Sorry, drop my earphones. And I can't really go back up to the others. Um, so I'm going to end the stream here. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed.